So I recently put a call out to the audience asking, who would they like to see as a guest on this podcast? And far and away, the number one choice and request for somebody to appear here on the Goldshaw Farm podcast was my wife, Allison. Allison is an incredible person, but she's also really camera shy. So, so it's like not all that common that you'll see her in one of our YouTube videos. But I asked her really nicely, and I promised her that we would wear ridiculous bear costumes. And so the very special guest for today's Goldshaw Farm podcast is my beautiful wife, Allison. Say hi to everybody, Allison. Hi, everybody, Allison. (laughs) So the plan here is we're going to kick back, and I got a whole bunch of questions that you guys have submitted, and I have questions of my own. I know you have questions for me. And we're going to interview each other while wearing these bear costumes. I guess, Allison, the first question I have is, why are we wearing these bear costumes? Because you agreed to it. (laughs) (laughs) Well, say a little bit more. Like, like, this was actually something you requested, that we get dressed up somehow. And, like, I think we were looking online and trying to figure out what they would be, like, if there would be dinosaurs or bears or what. And how did we end up with bears? Because we liked the costumes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm. I wanted to get dressed up, and this was what you agreed to. <laughs> I wanted to be in a super secret um, disguise. Yeah. Okay. Well, that sounds fair. Um. By the way, just relax and just talk. I don't, I don't know how to relax. <laughs> you just like this here. Just, just forget about the cameras. Just, just focus it on right me. There. Just talk to me. But they're not really right there. They're really not there. You got to just like pretend they're not there. Okay. Okay. So you can ask me the first questions. Why don't you, why don't we start this interview with you interviewing me? Because I think you'll have more fun with that. So what would be your first question for me? How do you feel about the bear costumes? Um, I think it's a very fun idea, but... I've been in the bear costume now for about five minutes and I'm already starting to sweat. And so I'm going to guess by the end of this podcast, I will be just completely drenched and I'm going to need to take a shower and this bear suit's going to need to go into the laundry. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it looks good on you. I, I like it too, but it's like, I mean, it would be really nice in the winter, but it, like the belly is like, I mean. This would have been a good bear costume for me last year. Uh-oh. We lost the light. Hang on a sec. Okay. I think I fixed our lighting problem. Yeah, we lost the light already in the first, what, three minutes of this interview. <laughs> this is going very well. Yes, it's going so well. I'm feeling... You know, I gotta, I'm actually more nervous than when I usually do these things, too, because, like, usually when I'm shooting a video by myself, I just can like kind of go into like the mode of like recording and I don't feel self-conscious or if I like have somebody else with me I'm just like in host mode and I feel like I can do that too but it's like actually really awkward trying to do with you like I don't feel like I'm myself because I don't feel like I'm acting like I normally do when it's just like you and me hanging out it's because I'm awkward yeah well you're way more awkward right now than you usually are too like you're way more talkward talk talkative yeah so I guess to introduce folks to you, though, like, uh, tell the story of how we met. But you tell it much better than I do. I know, but I'm always telling the stories. People want to hear from you. I think they're way more interested in you than me these days. Okay. Well, it was back in 2009. I joined Match.com. It was pretty sketchy back then. Now I think everybody orders their boyfriends and girlfriends off the internet. But not back then. It was kind of unique. I mean, I don't think it was that sketchy back then. It was, it was still pretty sketchy. Uh-huh. Everyone thought you were going to, like, mutilate me or something in a parking lot. That was, like, the, the rap you were having with, like, your sister and Susie and other people you were talking to? like. Yeah. 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 So... You sent me a clever email. 
Why are you smirking? <laughs> I, I'm, I am good at email marketing, so I do have that. Yes, it was apparently a stock email where you insert name here <laughs> and change eye color. It was a very good email. I, I imagine you may have used it 3,000 times. I, 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 I will admit that I used it once or twice. Uh, yes, that is true. I, I, yes, I, I had a template that I would use that when I would meet <laughs> women on Match.com, I would use the same email that seemed to work and like get a response versus Obviously. getting completely ignored. So yes, and I would just kind of customize it to like some specific details about you. Yes, that, yeah, it was it was basically email marketing 101. <laughs> <laughs> so I fell for your your scam. Yeah, you fell into my lead funnel. It was like a lead gen. <laughs> 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 and I met you on a rainy night. Yeah. After getting lost on the way there. After I offered to give you like really specific directions, you're like, oh, no, no, I don't you need You offered them. to lead me down a dark alleyway. A dark alley. It, it was like downtown West Hartford. I mean, granted, that was the way to the entrance to the restaurant, but like still, it was very suspect. And then I met you. And we had a very nice date. It was like a nice, we had drinks and fiddleheads. It was very nice. It was a good conversation. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you seemed okay. Yeah, not as sketchy as when you, like. Yeah, you didn't, you, you didn't do anything sketchy. Then we went on another date. And then a few more dates and then I decided, it still seems okay. <laughs> and then I married you because nothing showed me that you were not okay. You kind of charmed me i guess yeah and your uh, storytelling charm actually yeah that's like one of the few things i'm actually good at so there you go you're good at lots of things i guess you make a really good bear i make such a sweaty bear oh my gosh i gotta keep the I bet hood bears up. are Part sweaty of the deal all is the i time. gotta keep the hood yeah up. Right, okay. it's hot it's really hot i was like just check out thing i like <laughs> What? I was just checking the camera. I've, it's hard doing all of your own camera and sound and everything like by yourself. <laughs> so, all right. So we dated for a while. We were both living. Well, you were living in New Britain. I was living in Hartford, but you know, the greater Hartford, Connecticut area. But then you had to leave, right? Like that's the story as it goes. Mm -hmm. What? So pick it up from there. Well... I decided that it was a good time for an ultimatum, so I was either going to move with or without being engaged to you. That was pretty much it. I was going to grad school and moving to New Orleans. And I was like, hey, buddy, I'm out of here. And you proposed to me. I think you wanted to. Yeah, I was, I was definitely like, all right, well, this is a good uh, inciting incident. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so let's lock this thing down. Yeah, you liked it, so you put a ring on it. Yep. And then, but you didn't want. See, I wanted to stay in Hartford, Connecticut, for like the rest of my life. And that was part of the deal. We were not coming home to Hartford. <laughs> I said I would come home to you, but not to Hartford. So we had a we had a list of five cities we were going to mm -hmm. move to, right? So it was New York, Boston, mm -hmm. I think Washington, right? Mm -hmm. Was it Atlanta? Mm -hmm. it was Chicago. It either, it was Chicago? Okay, yeah, not LA, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's Chicago. And so the deal was I had to find a job in one of those five cities. And I figured you had a year, so that would give you plenty of time. Yeah, but actually, I think I left Hartford before you did. You did. <laughs> yeah, I told you you had to find a new job, and I thought, this is it. Not, like, this is going to be over. We're just going to stay in Hartford. And then, like, the next week, you were like, hey, I got a job in New York. And I was like, <laughs> huh, how about that? So then we were both packing up our boxes, like, at the same time and looking for apartments in New York and in New Orleans. Yeah, so that was the summer of 2010. So we, yeah, we got May, engaged May 2010. Mm -hmm. And let's see, I moved, it was like August. And I moved in June. June? Was it June? I thought you moved in like July. Mm -hmm. was it, or, okay. No, spring, summer term started in Yeah, that's right, yeah. June. And so, yeah, there we go. And then we got, when you graduated, you met, joined me in, in New York. We got married and uh, yeah, here we are now with a whole bunch of farm animals and stuff living in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. How, so one of the questions I know folks were wanting to ask is like, 
how do you contrast living in the city versus living out here like on the farm? I mean, it's just different. That was kind of the point. You need to go into it with a completely different mindset. So it's not like you can really compare and contrast them. Like there's people, you make friends, you find things to do to keep you occupied. You find a place to live. And you kind of live life. I think that's fair. <laughs> well, I, I just find it funny when people are like, oh, it's so different. Like, well, yeah. Yeah, it's different. Like, do I expect there to be, like, you know, happy hours right around the corner that I can just, you know, pop by, you know, after work? No. That just doesn't happen up here. We don't have that same type of density. And that's okay. I mean, I wouldn't really go hiking up mountains on my days off in the city. Or I don't think you would be a skier, like especially the way you're a skier now, um, if we no, lived in the city. It was a necessity to get through winter. Yeah. Um, were you surprised when I said I wanted to move to a farm? Yeah, but not really. And, and I think actually, though, like this is something that I think people don't quite perceive. Like it wasn't like we just were suddenly like, I was like one day like, that's it. We're moving to a farm. It was like a progressive thing because like our idea to buy this place first was more like, um, like, oh, this will be a vacation place and it'll be like something that we maybe like retire to. And so I feel like when we bought this place, that was our thinking. It was like, oh, 10, 20 mm -hmm. years from now, we'll move up there permanently, not like in the next five years. Well, it was kind of even way before that. So when we lived in New York and we were looking at places to buy, like we wanted to settle down there and we looked at where to move and we knew where we wouldn't want to live. Like I think, you know, like Staten Island was like on the no-go list. Like that was way too far out. We didn't want to live in like New Jersey. We didn't want to live in like, I don't even think we looked in the Bronx. I don't really know why. Queens, we didn't really look in. We look a little bit in Queens. Did we? Yeah. I don't, I don't think it was high on our list. I mean, we were like, we were, I mean, we almost bought a place in Brooklyn. Like, yeah, yeah. But we were looking mostly in Brooklyn and like the Upper East Side, Upper West Side. And we were also seriously thinking about Hudson River Valley. And then. Apparently, everyone else had the same idea as us at the same exact time, so... Well, I, I kind of I forgot about that, though. I think yeah, you're right. Like, like, yeah, we were always like, hey, maybe we'll have, like, a country house and city house type of life. Like, that was how we were thinking about well, it when we were in New York. we were even thinking, like, if we could get somewhere on the Hudson Line, we could still commute into the city. If we were able to, like, do some, you know, like, remote work, like, maybe come into the city three days a week. Like, you know, I think we had kind of been toying with that idea, and then we looked, and... It was like, okay, I'll have like some backyard chickens and we'll have a garden. And then we looked at the prices and we we're like, nah, not with our salaries. No. And then, and then it was like millions of dollars yeah, for like a tiny crazy. house on like one acre. And that was no go. And then we moved to DC. We actually bought a house. We had a little bit more space. We got the garden. And. We didn't really think about having chickens there. We couldn't. I actually oh. looked at it. Oh. Like, like we couldn't. I, the one thing I was seriously thinking of, if we hadn't moved, I would have probably put bees on the roof that next year. Yeah. You weren't big on that idea. No, especially since animals on our roof didn't really fare so well <laughs> um, with the possum tearing up the, the roof lining. So, yeah, I don't think I would have agreed if we had stayed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but... Then when you said you wanted to move up here, like we had already been going and visiting farms, talking about how we wanted to be more, you know, involved in growing our own food and supporting local farms. So it's kind of like a, okay, like that sounds, it, it didn't shock me. Like I think people went from think like being like, oh, Morgan was like, I go to Equinox and out to, you know, company events every night and blah 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 like i'm a fancy businessman to being like i'm gonna be a farmer tomorrow like it wasn't like that it no. wasn't like 
you completely flipped one day. It was like you kind of been talking about it and kind of thinking about it. And then when the opportunity arose to get a place somewhere, Vermont made sense as like, okay, maybe we'll be able to do the remote stuff, maybe spend our, I don't know, our retirement up here. I don't know if we thought about renting out the house or something. The people, I don't, no, I don't really, we never really wanted to rent. Yeah, like, I don't yeah. think we even really kind of, I don't, I don't think we even really formulated anything to exact because pretty quickly I ended up moving up here. Well, it just, this, I mean, I think there was two things about it. I mean, one, I think, yeah, we did like these progressive steps where like, you know, like ripping up the front yard in DC and the garden and what we had going there was like definitely a step. And then this idea of like, hey, let's have like an escape kind of place where we can go was another step. And then I think we were just so unhappy in DC, like in terms of, you know, you were frustrated and feeling like you hit like a brick wall with your career and you're getting kind of burnt out with like going to Africa regularly, but then coming back and not feeling like you were advancing Mm -hmm. and feeling kind of frustrated there. And I was just really unhappy with my job. And I think like that combination is what spurred us to like make the big change. Yeah. I think it was either moving up here or moving abroad. Yeah. No, we did talk a little bit about that. I think the big struggle was though, like, what was I going to do? Yeah. Especially because I only speak English. You'd learn. Espanol. Okay, no. That was painful to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Next. Next. <laughs> but like, so, so like, what's your experience been like? So like, as you like, you know, moved up here first, you know, actually there was a question of, um, what were Allison's days on the farm like before Mo- Morgan moved there? So, so like when you moved up the fall of 2017 and moved into the house, because you were staying with some friends over the summer, mm-hmm. and then you moved into the house. I was still in D.C. trying to sell that our house down there as well as find a job up here. So what was it like that fall moving up here in the middle of nowhere all by yourself? It was honestly not that bad. Um, it was just a lot of like getting stuff done. We were still renovating the house, so a lot of like managing the contractor and the crew coming in. So it was like getting interrupted every single day by them. I got a per diem job. So I was working in a medical office with a wonderful team. So I didn't really feel loud. Like, I didn't really feel lonely. Um, they were super helpful. Like, our neighbors were helpful when things went wrong. Like, I got my car stuck in a snowbank. And Franny got um, one of our neighbors to tow me out. So, like, it was just kind of like little steps like that. And we got Pablo. And Pablo and I spent a lot of time together. Yeah, that was I would so take him February. On walks. Yeah. Yeah. That was, a, I feel like that when Pablo came, that was like a big turning point for you. Yeah. He was my little buddy. <laughs> I mean, at that point I had some friends and things to do, but, and I was in school, but I had pops and I'd go out there every single day and I'd visit him and he learned, well, he kind of taught me, I guess, to put him on a leash with his little harness and we'd walk around the barn and he was such a good boy. He would come back when I called him. And he wouldn't try running off. It was really sweet. <laughs> we spent a lot of time cuddling. And he was a really nasty biter. So I trained him. And I trained him to his name. That was nice. Yeah. No. He'd come when I call. I just, I just remember by the time I moved up in May, you guys had like formed this connection where like, yeah, he was like your first son at that point. <laughs> You're like, yeah, and what of it? <laughs> yeah, I love Pablo. <laughs> I mean, I I love Lillian too. Oh, Lily, hey, you did. We got hi, Lil baby, punky us. princess. Here, I'll move the questions. You can hi. sit on my lap if you want. She's very confused by this outfit. <laughs> she thinks it's kind of like her favorite blanket, so she's. Yeah, I think so. I think she might actually get comfortable here for this interview. Let's see what oh, happens. Good. Well, you can answer some questions. Oh, too. she's making biscuits. You could ask questions if you have any. I think her question would be WTF. Yeah. So for folks who are not watching the video version of the podcast, 
little barn cat just crawled up on my lap and she's making some biscuits and looking like she's going to get comfortable to take a nap. She seems very happy about, oh, wow, she's yeah. getting into it. She's got the claws going. She's doing the whole, it's like the great British baking show right here. <laughs> yeah. So other than Pablo, what are your favorite animals on the farm? That was another question folks wanted to know. Well, Lillian. Yeah. Yeah. Well, house cat. Little barn cat. This is this is a, a debate that Allison and I have a lot. And you even went so far as to change your name with our vet. Well, once she no longer became a barn cat and she became a house cat, I thought she deserved a promotion. So her full name is Lillian Elizabeth House Cat Nay Barn Cat. See, and I think she's just Lil Barn Cat still. Once a barn cat, always a barn cat. I feel like you can't strip her of that title, even if she is mostly hanging out in my office these days. Yeah, well, good thing we have fire, otherwise she'd be office cat. I don't know if you guys could hear that, but she was pretty happy. <laughs> um, I also, I recently made friends with Ralph the Duck. Oh, I haven't told him. I haven't, I haven't even made a video about Ralph the Duck yet. They probably, this podcast is going to come out before Ralph the Duck, so we got to... Sorry, guys, you didn't hear that. <laughs> and my piggly wigglies. Yeah, you do love the pigs. You love the pigs so much. They are so funny. They they see me and they squeal and they run and they look so happy. Their little ears, they flappy, flap, flap as they run and they wait so patiently in the little line, all three of their little snouts in a row, like looking like, what you bring us? Well, and you like stop off on the side of the road and pick up like apples that have dropped and like get them anything you could possibly can and you love feeding them. They deserve good things yeah. and they're hungry. Is it going to be hard to say goodbye to them? Well, I won't be here for that because yes. Yeah. But I also don't want thousand pound pigs running around because I can just see them busting out of the electric fence and then wreaking havoc in our neighborhood and... You know, scaring small children would be chasing these pigs that weigh as much as like trucks, like running through the neighborhood, terrorizing livestock, and it'd be awful. They're big girls right now. They're they're, they're about girls. 350, 360 pounds at this point. Yeah. They're, they're like you and me combined. Yeah. We couldn't tackle a pig. They would take no, us out. We probably couldn't. That is actually very true. <laughs> and they're like pure muscle. Like no, there's a little wiggly. There's on, a little though. wiggle, particularly in the badunk dunk. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting little jowls now too. I'm noticing on their neck. They're getting like a little yeah. <laughs> so all right, let's see what other questions we got here for you. Um, do you ever see yourself becoming a full time farmer, or switching to livestock medical care? No, and no. So, so talk about that, because I think a lot of folks are, are surprised that you don't do much with the farm or have much interest with it. Like, like, what's your feeling there? I feel like I never copy edited your speeches to the board or, you know, did your PowerPoints. So why should I do your job now? Like, it's your career. And I think that there's being supportive and then there's being actively like doing the work and I'm happy to participate from time to time, like for the novelty of it, but I want you to stay accountable and responsible for it. Like this is your thing and you've decided you want to do it by yourself, like without hiring people. So therefore you need to be able to handle what you've already like bit off to chew like that's your responsibility and i think you've done a good job of it so far and i have my own career yeah i, I think that's actually a really good like uh like way to frame it because I, th I think a lot of folks see particularly other people in social media right and like both people in the couple are the ones doing all of the stuff around the farm or homestead and that's just not how we do it and it's, it's, I think it's just exactly right where it's like, yeah, this is kind of my job. This is what I wanted to do for a career standpoint. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you should then have to do it too by default. 
Yeah, I'm not like asking you to do CME with me or practice suturing or anything like that that like <laughs> you could have practiced suturing the other day <laughs> oh i'm very good at suturing i just i didn't want to deal with that nonsense and you being so yeah so for everybody who listened to probably the last week's podcast you know that was all about my little mishap and trip to the emergency room when that happened what were you thinking like about that whole experience other than rolling your eyes. <laughs> First off, I was like, I knew that was going to happen with that coffee thing. Like I told you it was a hazard. I knew someone was going to get cut on it. It was a stupid design. So I felt vindicated. Like, duh. And then I was like, oh, for goodness sakes, I just worked all weekend. Like, I don't have time for this nonsense. So I bandaged you up and I sent you on to the folks who would take care of you because you needed stitches and you needed numbing and you need someone who wasn't your wife telling you to stop being a weenie. <laughs> I think that's fair. <laughs> so um, when you um, like think about the future of the farm, what animal would you be most excited to see? I guess some fluffy white sheep would be okay by me, but I think we have al enough already. So, so let's talk about that. Like you're, you're of the mindset of like, don't add anything. Like you, you'd be perfectly content if I didn't add any new animals next year. To be honest, I would have been content with just Pablo Barncat. <laughs> Maybe a couple chickens and ducks. Yeah. I mean, I'm very happy that we have the other animals, especially Lil, because Pablo's a horrendous house cat yeah pablo is really bad as a house cat like his uh f u human mommy act is really annoying like he acts like some kind of terrible teenager who does stuff like scratch the furniture while looking me in the eyes he makes very intense eye contact while he's being ill-behaved yeah to make a point i think Ginny would be a very bad house cat too oh my gosh Jenny would destroy everything we own. She would knock everything off the counters. She'd go into the cabinets and tear stuff up. Yeah. Yeah, Jenny Barncat would be very bad. Molly, Molly, sadly, she was actually a very good, she was a very good barn, like house cat. The couple times yeah. she had to be in the house, she was extremely well behaved. She got along well with Lil. Like, it was very weird. She was very polite. Yeah. yeah. No. Who do you like better, Toby or Abby? It's impossible to choose. Abby wants to be the goodest girl ever. She so badly wants to be a good girl. And she fails so, so dramatically sometimes. <laughs> and she doesn't even realize that she's failing until she gets caught. And then she's like, oh, oh, that? I wasn't supposed to do that thing? Oh, sorry. And then you feel bad because you like act sad about it. But goodness gracious. She's very darling, though. She is very cute. She gives that beautiful little smile. Where she's like, it's very loving. It's full of love. Yeah, no, she's got a very good heart. And then Toby, he's much more of a chill boy. He's very, very gentle and kind. And he wants you to be happy, but like in a, like, I want you to be comfortable. Like, here, I'll come sit by you so you can give me a pat on the head. Um, but he can be a little bit standoffish too sometimes. Like he has a really thick skull. So sometimes he's like, uh, no, thank you. I don't feel like sitting. Whereas Abby's like, I'm trying so hard to sit. I'm trying so, so hard. Oh my gosh. The, the floor is lava. Oh, my butt. It just can't go on the ground. Oh, I'm wiggling so hard. My tail is wagging. And Toby's like, nope. <laughs> yeah. Toby has Pass. zero interest in pleasing anyone. Like. Like he, he, he's caring and he like, he, yeah, he does like, I think you put it really well. Like he wants you to be comfortable and, and he likes to make you happy, but he like doesn't, tr like Abby is a people pleaser. Like Abby is like trying her hardest and even fighting her instincts to like make you happy. Toby's just like, I'm going to be me. <laughs> yeah. He's like, okay, you gave me a few pats on the head. You seem content now. I'm going to go wander off. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let's ask some more questions here. This, these are some of the questions that are for both of us. 
Okay, what is the biggest challenge of living together with such different schedules? And just for folks who aren't familiar, explain your work schedule because I think sometimes like some people don't even quite grasp like how it is so different. Shift work. So that means like you'll have a couple days on and then like a week off sort of thing. Pretty much, yeah. So I work my shifts away from home. I spend the nights away from home for work. So I'll be gone. I don't know. Eight to ten days a month, maybe for work, and yeah, it's like, about over there. About eight days, yeah. It's usually about eight days a so month. So yeah. I'll work a couple days, we get a week off, work a couple more days, get a few days off, work a few more days. I don't know. I feel like it works just fine. Um, it gives you a chance, hint, hint, to clean up your messes <laughs> while I'm gone. There's a few places you might be thinking of. And I can guarantee you, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. That's because if you guys don't know, Alice is going to go away for the next two days for work or a couple days for work. And I'm supposed to clean the attic. And that mudroom, buddy, that's uh, that's crazy. Yeah, the mudroom. Yeah. The mudroom is always crazy, though. <laughs> it's extra right now. I th- I mean, I think it actually works out pretty well, too. I mean... We definitely, particularly now with like the way my job is and the way your job is, like we don't have like a Monday through Friday work week like we did like in past lives. And uh, like oftentimes I feel like we're doing weekend type things like in the middle of the week because it's almost even more convenient because it's like less crazy. Mm-hmm. Which I think yeah. is actually kind of nice. And like the days you're away, I usually just like work hardcore. Like that's when I'm like, staying up to like 10 o'clock and editing or writing and like doing like a lot of stuff and just super, super productive, like for Mm -hmm. 18 hours at a clip and then just crash and then do it again the next day. And then it's like nice. We can hang out when you're back. Then you get the time with me after. Yeah. No, I I think that that works really well. Lil has like completely made herself comfortable on my lap, and she, I like, I think she wants me to wear this costume all winter. If I had to guess, <laughs> yep, she's so happy. <laughs> like she, like we even have the fireplace going right now, which probably was a bad decision given the outfits we're wearing. But like, she seems incredibly satisfied with just sitting on my lap. Yeah, she doesn't I, want. To, I don't I, think I can get up. Because, like, it's no, impossible think, to get up when is, she's on your lap. She weighs, like, you know, a ton. It's About it's seven impossible. and a half pounds or so, yeah. No, she she weighs, like, a metric ton right now. <laughs> like, it's impossible to move. She won't let you. It's. I, I think this is her new uh, Bear Dad costume. I have to ask her if she wants Bear Dad or... <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing that you do that I still can't get used to. What? Like... You refer to yourself as human mom and me as human dad to all of our animals. I still find it weird. Well, people call themselves like pet parents, like, oh, I'm a cat mom, cat dad. No, you're not a cat. Like, she knows I'm not a cat. She, but I'm her human mom, like, totally. Yeah, I'm not your kidding mom, am I? No. <laughs> no, that was Big E. <laughs> all right. More questions here. Who should take out the trash? Morgan. I always take out the trash. Like, yeah. I mean, 95% of the time. Well, we also need to drive it to the transfer station. So I'm not putting them in the back of my sedan so it can like leak garbage juice all over my trunk because that gets stinky. Yeah. For, for those who don't know. So when you live in the middle of nowhere, you don't have like a garbage service that's like taking out your cans once a week. What you have is like you typically will take your bags to the like local town transfer station and drop off your garbage and recycling and all that and That is definitely an activity I do every week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Here, why don't you ask some? Let let you take lead. Oh, sorry, Lil. Was that too sudden of a movement? What irritates you most about each other? Morgan gets to go first. Oh, that's so unfair. Um... If it's something like how beautiful I am, I already know you need to come up with something I don't know. Okay. Um, what irritates me the most? I When you leave dishes in the sink. 
that's where the dishes go. No, they go in the dishwasher. Or if they're in the dishwasher and they're clearing, they go back in the shelves. You're allowed to have your opinions, but I would like to remind you of where all the other things go that you don't put away. <laughs> and somehow the dish is going in what I think is a reasonable spot. It's the pre-dishwasher loading zone. I think it's okay to put them there. Like leaving Amazon boxes torn open all over the house. That is the wrong place for things. <laughs> you know, it's funny though. Like I was actually thinking about this the other day. So I do most of the cooking in the household. And yes. as a result of that, I try to keep the kitchen like spotless. And like particularly when I'm not using it, like having it being a good resting place where it's really clean. And like you might not as much maybe. <laughs> I don't know how far I want to go based on that look you're giving me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then the rest of the house, I am like pure chaos, admittedly. And it can be like, yeah, it's bad. And I make piles of stuff that drive mm -hmm. you insane. You'll le like leave my pile of stuff like in a specific spot, hoping I will like move it because it's like right in front of me. And I just somehow go blind to it and just. Yeah, you'll like literally step over it. And just not even think twice. About it. And I, I don't, and I'm not even doing that intentionally. You know that, right? It's just me just not, I don't know what it is. It's like I block it out. It just becomes scenery. It's it's like me like you know the equivalent of like that painting on the wall like I just don't think about it. Okay, and obviously Morgan's messiness is a answer for me. <laughs> yeah, no, that, I think that that's pretty clear. I would love to hear about any hobbies you each have. Okay, so sorry, what hobbies do you have besides farming and video making? I don't really have hobbies. I think that's. One of those, th I mean, I'm so passionate about the things that I like doing and these are the things that I love doing, but I mean, I'm trying to think like what actual hobbies do I have? Like at this point, like, I read books occasionally. I don't know. You listen to books. I listen to books. I don't really read them anymore either. Yeah. I don't really have a, I can't, I can't think of a single hobby I have that's not like, I mean, I have things I love doing. Like I love making videos. I love writing. I love working around it here and projects. But I, I think at this point that because that's how I earn my living, you can't consider those hobbies anymore, right? Like 10 years ago, those would have all been my hobbies. Like those, that would have been the very easy answer of like, oh, I like to write or I like to draw or that would be my answer of what's your hobby. But now I don't think I really have hobbies. You though, you have like a very impressive collection of hobbies. I do. All right. Let's, let's give everybody the rundown of all of your hobbies. I took up cello since I've been here. Mm-hmm. I enjoy my arts and crafts. I have lots and lots of arts and crafts projects that are not finished. Yeah, you do. You like those my paint uh, by like numbers, paint by numbers, and those like little dot thingies. I finished my dim diamond dots. Diamond dots. I finished that. Is, yeah. I have cross stitch. I have embroidery. I have. All the outdoor things I enjoy doing. Rock climbing, skiing, hiking, uh, paddle boarding. Um, what else? I just started enjoying taking out those electric mountain bikes. Oh, yeah, e-biking, yeah. I guess, I mean, I don't know, even that, I don't know, it was hard for me to say because I do like riding my e-bike around, but usually it's just riding my e-bike around the farm. Yeah, you don't want to go off the farm with anyone. I mean, I occasionally do. We we don't do good riding bikes together because our styles are very different. Yes. That has been proven. <laughs> okay, next question. All right, next question. If you could be an animal, what would you be? If I could be an animal, what would I be? I think it was pretty appropriate. So a bear. Yeah, I'll take that. Thank you for reminding me that we're on a podcast <laughs> and like hand gestures don't really matter much a for people. A grizzly bear or a black bear or, a, I mean, you're not a polar bear right now, so. Uh, polar bear seems like it has the best, I mean, I don't know. So you have to have a rough time right now. Yeah. I mean, as those ice caps melt, it's probably less and less attractive. <sighs> How about you? What animal would you be? Actually, I, you know, I'm going to change my answer. I'm going bald eagle. 
<laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? Why a bald eagle? I mean, I think flying would be fun. You know, being a raptor of sorts would be fun. Um, I have like the federal protected status, so that would help too. Um, yeah, I think I would pick bald eagle. Hmm. How about you? A whale. Oh, yeah, right. Narwhale or blue whale? Or something else. Humpback or mm. orca. I don't know. Like orcas, they seem a little bit too aggressive and like really, really social. But blue whales are the opposite of that. And I'm not really that much of a loner. Um, Maybe like a humpback whale. Yeah. I like the songs they sing. It's a good answer. We were supposed to go whale watching for our anniversary, but unfortunately, because of the weather, the whale watch got canceled. But we did have a nice weekend in Portland. You still owe me a whale watch. We'll go in the spring when they open back up with their clothes okay. for the season. Good. Don't think <laughs> of my whales. You can ask a question. Now. All right. I'm going to ask a question. Um, if you brought a pet psychic to the farm, which animals would you like to... Oh, wow. That's a depressing question. Which animals would you like them to communicate and what questions would you like them to ask each animal? How's that depressing? I don't know. I was thinking pet psychic. It made me think of Molly. And then they go, oh, that would be the animal. Oh, Pablo's banging at the window. So this happens every single night where Pablo Barncat will bang on like the window here in our living room and Allison has to go visit him. I'll be back. Well, maybe that's a good time to go to a commercial message. All right. And we're back from that Pablo break. Yeah, I... I've been practicing attachment parenting with Pablo, so that way he knows that he can count on me for whatever he needs because he didn't have a very good upbringing. Yeah, he had a tough life before he came to this farm. Yeah, so I wanted him to to feel happy and like if he needed me for anything, he could come and get me. And sometimes he has something important to tell me like, hey, there's a skunk on the porch. And I don't really know what he expects me to do about that. Sometimes he complains about not getting his dinner in time. <laughs> Sometimes he just wants pets. Yeah. Is that weird of me to say? No. But what what do you say to the folks who say that we should be having kids? I don't want kids. Yeah. Even though you like Pablo. Is Pablo a child? No, he's a cat. There you go. Yeah. I, and I mean, that was something that I think we both agreed on. I don't know if it was before. We, it was, yeah, it was even before we got engaged, I think. We were talking about that one, right? I think I probably brought it up before a third date. Probably something like that, yeah. I, I've i always known I didn't want to have children. Yeah. And I was like, kind of like indifferent, I feel like. So it worked out well for us. Mm -hmm. Um, Another question that came in for you specifically is talk a little bit about your work. I think sometimes people don't quite understand it. Like, what do you actually do? You're a nurse, nurse practitioner. What's the difference? I'm asking, I know the difference, but I'm asking for the people who might not know the difference. <laughs> I got this look that was like, whoa. <laughs> I'm an emergency nurse practitioner, which means that I see patients who come to the emergency department. I can see patients basically of every acuity level. Um, and I assess them. I diagnose them i treat them like describe it because you know like for the the hospital that you work in here in vermont like what is like a typical shift look like like what does that look like for folks to understand so i work shifts between eight hours and 12 hours each i see what patients in the department haven't been seen i go and i meet them i do my assessment physical exam order up some tests follow up on those tests. I can be doing anything from suturing folks to reducing fractures to admitting them to the hospital for sepsis, managing critically ill patients, um, intubating folks, 
um, dealing with traumas. Um, so just treating things. anything that comes into the ER, basically. Pretty much. And the nice thing is I have attending physicians to work with, so we have a good collaborative um, team environment. What would you want to be doing like five years from now? The same thing. Yeah. Ten years from now? Same thing. 25 years from now? That's a hard question. I don't know. 25 years from now, I'll be pretty much a little bit past retirement age. So I don't know doing it if I still want to be doing it, I guess. But, you know, one thing folks have asked is, like, do you have dreams of, like, coming to the farm and just working and living on the farm full time? And like... Maybe if I'm skiing full time. Yeah, I think you can only even here in Vermont do that about six months a year. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Do you do you feel annoyed that like I stay here all the time and uh like work from home basically? Why would I? Do um, I want you to go away for work? I mean, it's nice to see you around to make me dinner. <laughs> I I don't really have any strong feelings about where you are for work. Like I would it wouldn't make sense for you to like drive far away to work on a farm. Yeah, that would be weird. Yeah. I kind of like working. I mean, this is the only time, like, I mean, I guess sort of the pandemic spurred it, but like, I've never had jobs where I could really work any significant amount of time from home. Like, this is a very rare thing. Like, never up until this point. Like, I had jobs where, like, I'd be on the road three quarters of the time. I think that was a lot harder for a marriage than me working from home. What are your dreams for the future of the farm? I think having it be a successful, well-organized, um, beautiful place to live with, you know, nice gardens and landscaping and um, flowers, orchards, berry bushes, things like that. And then having, you know, animals for meat and eggs. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same. Well, I hope you guys have enjoyed this interview and uh, learned some things. Maybe, maybe we'll do a follow-up one if folks enjoy this. I don't know if they did or not. This is weird. I've, I, I got to say this. I, I, I feel so... I don't know what it is. Like this does, I don't feel like I'm, I'm like in my normal groove for making a video. I mean, it's, it's kind of fun. I mean, I like talking with you and it's just, it's weird because it's not like how we're usually just hanging out and it's also not like how I'm usually making my videos. And so it just feels very awkward. I should hope this is how we normally hang out wearing these cool outfits. Yeah, I don't know. This better become a thing. I mean, when our, our house gets significantly colder than most other houses because it's just a big old farmhouse and... I don't know. I could see trotting this thing out in January just as like a lounge suit. Like it's pretty darn comfortable. It's a little hot right now, um, but we don't even have the heat on in the house. We do have a fire going right now, but I don't know. It's pretty comfortable. What do you think? Yeah. I think it'd be nice to have these lounge suits all winter. Yeah. Yeah. So you can catch us in our bear suits soon. Thanks for watching, everybody. It's got a soul, this hero farm, it falls asleep inside my arms We walk the fields under the stars For love is here Gold shall fund